Welcome back for another episode with your favorite Project Lead the Way teacher, Mr. Spaeth. Today we're going to be looking at uh, our civil engineering and architecture lesson for transmission load calculation. Uh, so without further ado, I'll share my screen with you and we can get started. So as you can see, um, what I have open is going to be I can hide this. There we go. What I have open is my Revit file of my brew stop coffee house. Very simple design, uh, low slope roof, uh, four walls, one with lots of windows. So what we are trying to find is how many BTUs per hour in the winter and the summer at most we are going to need for both heating and cooling. Um, this information, then we can size up the size of our heater, size up the size of our air conditioner. And in order to do that, we need to know what materials we're using. We need to know uh, which will affect our R value calculations. We need to know our area of the walls that we're transmitting heat through. Um, and then the difference in temperature that we're trying to design for. And this is found simply uh, with a, a chart that I'll show you later. Um, and then from there, we're going to calculate how many BTUs per hour we're going to lose or gain through that wall or window or roof or door. And uh, then from there, we can find total BTUs by simply summing all these together. Uh, we're going to do a cooling and a heating one. Obviously, I'm going to be a bit more. I live in Wisconsin, and so our design temperature here was negative 4 degrees. So we'll show you where we get that here shortly. First, we're going to talk about, uh, let's talk about that design temperature. That design temperature is found simply, um, if you Google winter and summer design temperatures, um, you will find this right here. So this table, call it Appendix D, degree day and design temperatures, um, international building code. Uh, I'm going to go down to Wisconsin. I'm going to, I'm I'm going to look up Milwaukee because that's where I'm designing this building. Notice you'll see a negative four under the column for winter, and it says 97 and a half. 97 and a half percent of the days during the year are going to be warmer than negative four degrees. Same thing I'll do for summer, except summer I'm going to take a dry bulb. They give you a wet bulb temperature that just basically lets you calculate uh, average relative humidity. But our dry bulb here that we're going to find for our cooling design temperature would be 87 degrees. So you'll see where I plug these into my spreadsheet. 87 degrees during uh, cooling. So this is my summer. Uh, and I want to get to 72 degrees. So I need to make up that 15 degree difference with an air conditioner. Almost the same thing for heating, except I'm going to be looking at a 71 degrees inside and we need to make up a difference from negative four degrees so a 75 degree difference that we need to make up obviously a higher btu per hour level for heating than we have for cooling okay so let's get into um where we get the other information here in order to get our btus per hour btus per hour is simply the multiplication of the u factor the area in square feet and the delta T. So we need to talk about where we get this U factor and where we get the area. U factor is simply one over the R value. And the R value we can find if you go to your general student resources within projectleadway.org and CEA student resources, you're going to find an R value densities chart. This R values density chart is going to tell you the R value either per inch or per unit for all the building materials that you're, that you're gonna see in inside of Revit. So just to give you a couple examples, uh, my brick wall for both west wall, east wall, north wall, and south wall, it's all the same. On my brick wall, I had a number of different things that I had to calculate. Let me just show you my simple brick wall. So if I highlight on it, I go to, I just had a basic wall, exterior wall, uh, edit type, edit again, these are the different layers that I had. So common brick, three and five eighths inch, an air gap, 
three inches of rigid insulation, damp proofing, um, and I had seven and five eighths of CMU on the inside. Okay, all of these things went into this calculation. So three and five eighths for my brick multiplied by 0.2. I found that 0.2 by going to uh, the masonry section, masonry system. Uh, brick 0.2 was my R value per inch. So I had to multiply the number of inches by my R value per inch. My rigid insulation was next. My rigid insulation, I found I had three inches of it. Uh, so my insulation, I chose uh, the rigid board extruded polystyrene. I went for the highest value there. You don't have to go for the highest value. Uh, you could very well take one of the lower values here just to see how, how bad things could be. But I went with the five R value per inch. So again, those two had to be multiplied, the inches and the R value per inch. Um, and then I just had a, a couple of others that had uh, regular values here. So let's just show you why we had that. So the CMU, seven and five eighths, again, that should be under the masonry, or maybe not. Yep, so here we are, CMU between 1.9 and 3.2 or between 2.3 and 2.6. I took the 3.2. Again, this is not a per inch, it's a per unit. So I simply just added 3.2. And then I believe it was my air gap that makes up the difference. Yeah, airspace between studs. I, I took that as being an air gap. Um, maybe not the, the most correct thing there, but I took my 0.95 and I added that into my equation as well. After pushing enter, I had 19.875, that's my R value for each of my brick walls. Um, and I simply uh, went equals that value for each of these, okay? So equals K5, all the way down because it's the same type of wall that I had all the way around. Now, if your west wall is different than your east wall, you need to do a different calculation. All right, the next I did the roof the same way. And, uh, and I would show you my, my roof, but it, it works out the same exact way. So if you have any questions about that, I would ask your professor. Um, the last one there was the doors and windows, and that's simply just right on this chart. So 1.67 um, doors without glass, 1.67, and then double glazed windows, 1.67. So that should be all you use that for to get these R values. From there, your U, your U factor is just equals one divided by the R value. So you can see that's the same. It should be the same thing for all of my walls because they're all the same type of brick, all the same construction. Okay. And then from there, we need to find how many square feet each one of these walls covers. Um, that becomes a little bit harder when we add in windows. And so notice over here, I put together a little chart to figure out how, how many windows I have. Because that, the windows is just one little uh, row here, and I, I don't want to uh, over encumber that row with a bunch of calculations just right there. So I simply said, okay, I'm gonna make a different chart, and here's where I put it. So let's talk about windows. Windows, um, and under Revit, it's it's not too bad getting all of these areas. So if I highlight this section of window and I scroll down, you'll notice it gives me a square area or a square footage. That's really nice. So when I'm looking at my, I believe this is my either, this is my east end. I have three sections of windows, one, two, and three. Now I can't highlight them all at the same time and get a square area. I wish I could do that. Um, however, I can highlight one section of windows, get the area, put it in my chart. This is my east end. And these are the three areas that I had. I simply just added them up. Okay, so that was for the windows. Back over to the east end, getting the area just for the wall. And it's just as simple. Highlight the wall, it gives you an area. 715.99. So when I go back to my transmission load worksheet, 715.99. And I know that um, if I look at my west side, I should see just about the same area, right? Because I have 
I have the same dimensions here. So I could, again, add up all those windows, add the wall, and it should add up to the same area that I had on the east side. So I'll just go equals west plus west, enter, and then equals east plus east. Plus, I have a door, which is 7 feet by 3 feet, so I'm just going to add 21 square feet there, and you'll notice it's the exact same thing. Okay. So again, get those areas. Not tough to do, just a little bit cumbersome when you're talking about adding the windows in there. The doors, I simply had 36-inch uh, by 84-inch doors, so that's 3 feet by 7 feet. I had two of them, so 3 feet by 7 feet times 2. The roof... The exact same thing, um, highlight your roof, it gives you an area, use that in your worksheet. Uh, multiply those three numbers, the delta T, the area, and the U factor. And then down at the bottom, I simply just went over and added up all of those to get a total transmission load. Uh, and then just for fun, I took the individual transmission loads from each wall or window or category and divided it by the total just to see what percentage was causing me the most transmission of heat. And obviously it's the windows. Same thing for heating. So I would copy and paste all of this stuff for heating. Not the delta T because that's different. We talked about that. Um, but I would copy and paste all of it because it's the exact same. You'll see the same thing, 74% for my windows. And that's it. Hope you had fun. Hope that you get uh, a good transmission load worked out and you guys can calculate things for your designs, uh, both the first semester and second semester. Thanks.